what feels like ages ago I had the Panasonic G7. A very capable camera even by today's standards and used it can now be had for 250 bucks or so. This is its younger sister, the G80 or G85, depending on where you live. And here are five reasons why I think it might be worth considering. First reason is the price. This haven't dropped to the 250 mark yet, but it will. I bought it brand new in a store for less than $500. Given what you get for your money, I would say that's a bargain. It has a nice sensor, loads of gimmicks, but also many features that can actually be useful. Like being able to take stills with a mechanical shutter during video recording. Why don't all cameras have that? It has a touchscreen, mic input, separate SD and battery slot and many other things that's usually sitting on higher priced gear. It's comfortable with a nice button layout. I especially enjoy this little button which quickly turns the aperture and shutter dial into an ISO and white balance dial. The viewfinder and screen are both nice and crisp. Also, Panasonic still has a way too sensitive EVF sensor. Extra annoying since it's a fully articulating and my hands needs to pass by it when using the touch controls. And in my X-H1 I love the fact that the EVF sensor shuts off as soon as I tilt the screen. Next reason is the weight or the lack of it despite the awesome build quality. Just like the G7 it's feather light paired with a pancake lens or this very affordable 25mm f1.7 it's a very compact kit. The camera is small mostly because the sensor is small. But you can turn it into basically an APS-C camera with something like the cheap Viltrox focal reducer. The only punishment is AF performance, which on native glass and in good light is blazing fast by the way. This brings us to the third reason, the lens options. There is no way getting around that pretty much anything will adapt to Micro Four Thirds. There are lenses for all budgets and needs. Not wanting to lug heavy gear leads us to the next reason, since you probably don't want to carry a tripod either, the in-body stabilization. Panasonic is pretty much neck and neck with Olympus on this. For stills it means that handheld one second exposures at 280mm equivalent is doable. And if you have something to lean on you can go 5 seconds. While looking at that you notice the last and biggest reason to dig this camera. Image quality. In video this camera shoots a really lovely image. The codec is somewhat gradable without taking up too much space. Only time it struggles is if you try to push underexposed footage or go too high on the ISO. The stills are very lovely as well, rich files with a pleasing color science. I really dig that it's a 4x3 sensor, so in Lightroom I always have some headroom to correct if I miss the composition vertically, since I set the camera to display 3x2. The dynamic range is fine, noise looks nice and grainy, and the resolution is more than I would ever really need, and the IBIS makes ISO performance a bit less important. 
That's about it. Great bang for the buck, even compared to the latest and greatest releases. Please subscribe for upcoming videos and follow me on Instagram for new pictures every day. Until next time, goodbye.